Guys, we're super excited to bring you the latest project we've been working on. The Rule of Cars is a course that teaches you how to own and drive luxury cars such as this X6M without losing tens of thousands of dollars per year. Click the link below to find out how you can own and drive your dream luxury cars today. Guys, welcome back to the Desert Road. We're in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona today reviewing this 2022 Lincoln Corsair. Excuse the little bit of wind you might hear. It's extremely windy out here. I'm not sure how much the mic is going to pick up, but we're going to give you a full tour of this car, take you on a walk around, interior, exterior, and obviously take you on a drive and share all of our impressions with you. So let's begin. Um, as you can see, this car is finished in this beautiful smoke bronze metallic. It looks absolutely gorgeous, especially in the sun. Typically, I'm not the biggest fan of brown finished cars, but this has a nice golden hue to it. A lot of spec and just metallic inside this paint. It looks absolutely great. Um, you have the chrome, obviously the chrome grille, nice headlights. This is uh, doesn't have the fog lights down below. I, 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 you can get that with a couple of the higher up packages. This is the reserve package. It has a couple extra options on here that we're going to talk about and discuss uh, in more detail. Sitting here on 19 inch wheels you know got plenty of rubber for a great ride here the the 225 55 19 inch wheels definitely uh they, they they look great they fit this car very very well um got uh you know the typical lincoln corsair badge in here how they integrate that into almost their entire lineup um coming around here I really, really like this tapers off right here. It gives it this uh, nice floating roof line look here, um, extends all the way to the back, kind of gives it even a little bit more of a sporty look here in the back. Very, very clean back over here. Uh, if you look at it directly from the back, it almost looks Porsche-like. These nice thin lights right here. It's got a nice LED strip that goes all the way around. Overall, a very, very clean look for, for a car like this. Uh, finished off very well. It makes it look modern. It's got real exhaust pipes down here, which is which is great. Um, it might require a little bit of cleaning time to time, but overall, it looks great. Finished off with this nice silver trim uh, diffuser back there. Uh, the size is right about perfect so it is in this segment of SUVs slightly on the smaller side this is a few inches shorter than let's say a comparable uh, Q5 or maybe even a Volvo XC60 so this does um, shorten the car up a bit but you don't use any of the versatility that comes with something like that as we'll show you it has a actually a quite spacious back seat and enough trunk room for almost all of your getaways. So let me show you how much trunk room this got. Very spacious here. We can throw all the luggage, pile it up, um, you know, more than enough room to haul pretty much everything you need. I mean, look, if you have kids and you need a full-size stroller and, uh, and uh, you know, pack and place and all that, this might not be the right car for you. But day to day, this definitely provides all the usability and more of, uh, of everything you can want. So having said all that, Let's take a look at the interior and then take her on a drive. All right, moving on to the interior of this car. Uh, to start off, obviously, uh, you can see the two-tone interior in here, ebony cashew interior. It looks really, really nice in person. It's not too light. It's not too dark. It's got this beautiful two-tone theme going on um, everywhere from the doors. Uh, you can see the dash as well. The top portion is wrapped. In the cashew part, the bottom portion is in the uh, ebony part. Just looks really, really nice. Uh, this wood trim is outstanding. Uh, looks looks great. Fits in with the interior very well. As you can see, this particular trim also comes with a dark headliner. My favorite. I can't stand light headliners. Don't know why so many cars put that in there. Um, overall, has the has the Rebel sound system in here, the 14 speaker system. That sounds great. Seat adjustability on the door. Uh, very Mercedes style here. Uh, it actually has real uh, door handles here, outside and inside. So this actually activates the lever. They're not electronic. Um, let's pop in here and go through some of the other key features. Uh, plenty of storage space right there. You get two cup holders and a nice large cubby right there. So plenty of room. You can store, uh, you know, some of your junk, uh, maybe even a water bottle, whatever you need. Throw your phone in there. It has this floating console right here. 
that looks very nice. Uh, lots of piano black in this interior. Um, uh, very roomy uh, center console right there. You know, a couple, you can throw change right there. Yeah, this, this is, they did a good job giving you plenty of storage space. Obviously some door space right here as well. Um, dark headliner, as I, as I mentioned, it doesn't have a grab handle on this side, but all in all, these seats are very comfortable. Um, it feels great in here. Uh, it's got uh, part, part of the, one of the packages has got the large panoramic, 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 uh, moonroof here. Awesome. Um, you know, little cubby for sunglasses. Again, lots of piano black in here makes it look very modern. Two tone wheel premium very premium feel to this wheel nice leather right here in this two-tone uh absolutely no complaints with the steering wheel um you, you know so yeah all in all it's great let's turn her on uh show you some of the screen features over here and then move on to the drive all right guys the car is on uh it still has the sync 3 system okay i must also mention that this corsair did get updated for the 23 model year so it looks different on the outside and inside this is the last year of this generation it still has the previous sync 3 system overall this is fairly responsive in here on this screen unlike some of the other uh lincoln's i've tested or my uh my personal aviator that i drive for some reason this sync 3 works very very well in here also, um, we'll talk about some of these other things in the drive, but I really appreciate it. It has a really nice heads up display in there as well. Uh, it has your time, your temperature, um, you know, all the radar, cruise radar uh, metrics and controls shown in there. It's, it's great. I, I, I love it. Um, so, so we got that. So having said all that, uh, let's take a look at the back seat real quick. All right, guys, moving into the back seat. Let's see how much room we have. So this is like me sitting behind me. Um, yeah, fairly roomy overall. It's, you know, it's great, supportive, um, you know, uh, has, you know, quite a bit of headroom here still. Great, you know, no complaints, no, comp no complaints with that room at all. All right, guys, so that wraps up our, our interior overview. Let's take her on a drive and cover the rest of it. Let's go. All right, guys, we're driving 22 Corsair. Uh, we got her out here on the road. One of the things you notice immediately is just how hush quiet this is. So one of the things that impresses me a lot with this Corsair is just the overall build quality. I think um, for, for a Lincoln, again, comparing it to my Aviator, this is just, it feels like more solidly built all around. The ride feels um, great. It's plush, not too tight. Uh, not too soft. Um, it, this is on, on springs over here. Um, again, the other great part for a car in this class, this has dual pane windows. So it really, really insulates you from the road, which, which I, I really appreciate. So the build quality of this is pretty fantastic all around. I really like the way these seats feel. They're supportive. They're not overly bolstered. These are just kind of standard. Your standard Lincoln seats just feel great in all the right areas, not really tight, um, you know, anywhere on my body. Overall, I like the seating position in here, the ergonomic stuff here. Visibility for this car is fairly great all around. You have a slight blind spot in the back, mainly because of that headrest as well over there. But all in all, this is great. What really impresses me with this Corsair is the amount of options that are built into here. This has everything my Aviator has, potentially more. So it's got heated and cooled seats. It has a heated steering wheel. It's got the full heads-on display. It has the 360 camera. Some of those come as part of the package. Uh, one of them is the luxury package that gives you the upgraded sound system. But I'm fairly impressed. Everything you can get this car with. So uh, for a car in this class this Revel sound system 14 speaker system in here it sounds great it's not as high-end or as polished off as some of the other systems I've heard but overall it's very great again driving this car around I've had this already for several days one of the things that impresses me most honestly is it doesn't ride like an American car this drives like a much much tighter German small SUV. I really like the feel of this car. Um, it, it, it handles well. It picks up very fast. So this particular one, there's two engines 
engine options that you can get. Both are four cylinder, either a 2.0 or a 2.4 liter. This has the smaller of them. Every review I've read and I've seen on this, absolutely advises not to get the bigger one because it's not any faster and won't do anything for this car. Honestly, driving this around with the smaller engine, I don't feel like this needs any more pep to get going. This engine handles this car very, very well overall. The ride is, to me, overall superb, especially in this class. It doesn't feel like an economy car in any way. If I didn't see the Lincoln badge in front of me, honestly, this drives to me very similar to many of the Mercedes I've driven recent and in the past. It has a great luxury ride. It's very easy to drive, very easy to maneuver, and, and overall, uh, just, just a firm, solid feel on a car like this. I'm gonna show you a little bit of the acceleration, especially here from a light, and uh, you can kind of see for yourself just how, how hush and quiet and zippy this is. So one, two, three. So being a front wheel drive car, you can also opt this in all wheel drive. I would get the all wheel drive option on here. Being a front wheel drive, you definitely feel that pull and sway of the of out on the front especially under heavier acceleration so you do notice that quite a bit um overall it, it's not a bad thing you know you get used to it fairly fairly quickly uh you more so feel it around turns uh overall again i i like the responsiveness of the the throttle response on here so um, something like my aviator does not do that it has a much much lazier throttle the car takes a while to pick up i mean here uh, it, it, literally i mean it just it just goes and goes so i really like that about this car guys moving into our likes and dislikes now we're going to start off with our top three likes number one like I, I really enjoy the build quality on here. It feels on par to German cars. I know I've ragged on American cars, other Lincolns in the past for you know things here and there. I've had this last couple days. Overall, every single piece from the seat to the steering wheel to all these panels feel really solid. Even on the exterior of the car, I couldn't find a single blemish. Either this car was made on a really good day or Lincoln really stepped it up on, on this line of cars. Now, number two like is the way this car drives. It drives very similar to the German counterparts. Um, the, the ride could easily be mistaken um, for a BMW or a Mercedes or an Audi if you didn't see this badge in front of you. It has a, a more tighter ride than you would typically expect of American cars. Um, it doesn't feel like an Econo box at all. It does feel like a premium, high-end, compact SUV. And number three, like, I like the way this car accelerates. It's quick on its feet. It's easy to drive. It's uh, in almost any situation, whether you're from a light or, or you're already moving. It picks up and goes very, very rapidly. Overall, I enjoyed that about this car. Uh, gives it a much more enthusiastic, sporty feel. All right, guys, moving into our three dislikes. Number one dislike is the overabundance of chrome that Lincoln still uses on the outside and inside of the cars. Uh, on the outside, we showed you a lot of the trim, the grill, uh, so, yeah, the, the window trim, it's just a lot of chrome on here. Moving into the interior as well, you can see that on, on the vents, it has it on the screen. I just wish it was, uh, you know, just even a more basic silver trim. Uh, I, I prefer that. Number two dislike is this car as it's optioned um, with you know all the features and everything I pointed out sits at $51,000. Now for a car in this size and this class, this seems to be on, on the higher side to me. I would start looking at other competitors, potentially German cars for that much money. And number three dislike uh, is uh, the th you know, and I'm really nitpicking here. It's just the way overall this four cylinder, the, the hum or the noise it makes or the lag thereof in this car is just, it's not very enthusiast. It's just kind of like a, you know, a, a small hum in the background and um, nothing that stands out in your face, but again, doesn't sound as good as some of the other four cylinders that we've written. Um, that's about it. That covers our review of this Lincoln Corsair. Uh, stay with us, follow us for more reviews, and we'll see you next time on the Desert Road.